Hello, hope your day is going well. I know that um, it's going to get in the 80s today the way it looks. It's going to be quite a warm day for a May 1st, isn't it? You know, I think back on May 1st, and of course, people like to do May baskets and all that kind of stuff. I don't, I really never did that when I was a youth or anything like that. But boy, when I got out into South Dakota, I found out there are a lot of people that like to do that. Yeah, uh, it's it's a nice day for doing that kind of stuff. If that's what you're inclined to do, you know, drop it off at your neighbors and just wish them a blessed May anyway. And I can remember um, the biggest thing that I remember about May as I was growing May first as I was growing up was the fact that the at then Soviet Union now Russia they like to show off their military armament. It's a big celebration for them and their leaders and, and their um, military folk as far as showing off what they have. And, but now we're stuck. <laughs> we're stuck. And I know a lot of you have been asking, when are we going to get back to church? When are we going to get back to worship? Some of you may have caught Bishop Hagmeyer's segment on Kelloland yesterday. And, and I think... Um, I know that um, she has sent um, out a, it's not a papal bull, it's not one of those in, those things that you have to keep in, keep in mind, mind but, but she sent to us at, as leaders in the church, um, South Dakota's back to normal plan is what, what this kind of, this segment is, is called. And what she does, um, she starts out by, as South Dakotans are asked to consider steps as we look to get back to normal. One of the proposed steps that as they, churches, resume services, they are encouraged to consider the guidelines for public gatherings and to consider steps to maintain reasonable physical distancing. Well, they're saying, she says to us leaders, while your worshipers have a choice in determining if it is safe to attend in-person worship, your leaders and staff do not have that same choice. In the words of St. Paul, what then shall we say in response to this from Romans 8? And then she goes on to say, God created us for community. We are relational beings. I understand that we want to be able to gather, but we must be careful to consider whether we are responsive, res whether we are ready to return to normal. Congregations across South Dakota have, have responded faithfully and adaptively to the challenges of COVID-19. While church doors are locked, ministry in Christ's name continues if even expanded. We need to continue to be flexible and sensible. Haste makes waste. We remember that from our youth, don't we? Haste makes waste has been my mantra throughout most of my life unless life was threatened. COVID-19 is still real. No cure or vaccine has been found. We can't tell you what to do, but we recommend not meeting in person yet. Undoubtedly, the measures taken to reduce the spread of the virus have been challenging and caused significant loss and grief. However, they have been effective in preventing our medical systems from being overwhelmed. As we begin to plan for the upcoming months, we encourage communities to be wise and flexible, putting first the needs of the most vulnerable, staff and volunteers, and to not rush into anything. And I know on Tuesday we brought up the idea of singing, and that's of course where the where we can have a lot of trouble too, but we want to do it. That's a part of our worshiping community, isn't it? Well, in her Kelloland thing, the highlight of what she said um, is kind of highlighted is the side effect we have found uh, the side effect is that we have found new ways take care for our neighbor. So, and I, and I know I don't want to put any of you in danger, just love to see you, and it's been nice when I, some of you just stop by and we can talk at a distance. But as I, I just want to assure you, we are looking at the ways to try to be helpful in our worship life. 
And I thank you for your concern. I thank you for your desire to want to come back and gather. And I thank you for how the ways that you're reaching out and helping one another and being good neighbor to e as we be good neighbors to each other. For that's, that's what we want. We want our neighborhood together. And a part of our neighborhood, Nancy Giesinger, I know she was such a, she has been in the past such a vital member of our congregation. And I always have enjoyed going to visit her with communion and stuff. Well, she is seriously ill right now in the hospital here in Huron. And, and we, we, I ask you to please pray for she and Jean and the family as they walk through these difficult, challenging days. Let us pray. Lord our God, we come to you again, realizing your presence, your hope, and your love as we start a new day, as we get into a new aspect of life, as we get into this month of May. We, first of all, lift up the Giesinger family as we give, we know that Nancy is in your hands and in your care. We pray for the medical team that's helping her along the way and, and walking with Jean and the family as they're, they're trying to decide how best to help her. Lord, we pray for all of us as we know we are all in your hands. All of us have those things that, that we know can be challenged by the virus, and we pray that that doesn't happen, that isn't what's going on with Nancy. But we pray that you help us all to do the caring things that we can. Maybe send off a card, maybe a text, depending on the, the situation that's going on for somebody. But we pray that you will help and lead us as we do those things that, that we can to be community, to be church for one another. Now I share with you a prayer um, entitled, have one and We Have One Another, by Herb Brokering again, and surprise me, Jesus. Lord, we are not all looking at things in the same way. We see the same thing happening, and we're not agreed on what we see and feel. We are many, and together we make up a world of differences. Help us to take the time to know what one another knows and feels so that we can increase what is true. We cannot see so much alone. We cannot decide all the truth alone. We do not need to do it alone. We have one another. Improve our sight as we look and feel and talk and act with others. We have each other, Jesus. How much we learn when we look again, Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you be with us at, at this time. And that it's at the beginning of the day, we pray that you be with us in this day. If it's at the end of the day that, that we are doing this, we pray that you be with us into this night. Give us a restful night of sleep so that we can awaken refreshed for the new tomorrow. Lord God, all these things, anything else you see we need, please grant us through Jesus who taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God's peace, God's blessings, God's hope and love continue to surround you as you go doing the things that are needed and necessary in your life. Thank you for your time. Bye.